guys, this is uh, my third lecture in uh, simple linear regression. Uh, in the first lecture, uh, we have learned uh, uh, how to fit a, a simple linear regression model uh, to a data set uh, which fits the data best. And that means, uh, we have learned uh, how to fit uh, a simple linear regression uh, model uh, using the least square technique. Uh, in the second uh, lecture, uh, we have uh, we have learned uh, uh, the statistical property of uh, the uh, regression coefficients that is uh, beta naught hat and uh, beta 1 hat and we have observed that uh, uh, both the beta naught hat and beta 1 hat they are uh, unbiased estimator uh, of beta naught and uh, beta 1 respectively and uh, we we computed the variance of uh, beta naught uh, hat and beta 1 hat and uh, we found that uh, uh, both the variance of beta naught and uh, beta naught hat and beta 1 hat they involve uh, a sigma square. So, uh, sigma square is, uh, uh, is the population variance uh, which is uh, unknown. So, what we need to do is that we need to uh, estimate uh, we need to estimate the uh, population variance uh, sigma square. So, here is the content of uh, today's lecture. Uh, we are going to estimate uh, the population variance uh, sigma square. So, we will give an unbiased estimator of sigma square and uh, next we evaluate uh, the performance of a fitted model. So, we will talk about the confidence, confidence intervals and uh, uh, tests for the regression coefficient beta naught and uh, beta 1. So, first we talk about uh, the estimation of of sigma square. Well, uh, the estimation of sigma square is uh, obtained from SS residual and uh, in lecture 2, we have proved that SS residual this can be uh, written in the form S y y minus beta 1 hat square S x y. Well, uh, now our ultimate aim is to prove that uh, that SS residual by n minus 2, this is an unbiased estimator of sigma square. So, what we need to do is that we will find the expected value of uh, residual sum of square. So, expected value of residual sum of square S s residual is equal to expectation of S y y minus expectation of beta 1 hat square S x y. Well, uh, so first we uh, let me find the value of uh, expected value of S y y. 
So, expected value of S y y which is equal to expectation of S y y is nothing but summation y i minus y bar whole square and uh, this can be written as expectation of summation y i square minus n time expectation of y bar square. Right. Now, again uh, this one is equal to this one is equal to uh, summation of expectation of y i square minus n time expectation of y bar square. Well, uh, so what is expectation? Uh, let me recall uh, the model y i y i equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x i plus epsilon i. And uh, we assume that uh, epsilon i expected value of epsilon i is equal to 0. So, expected value of y i equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x i. Right, the xi is not a random variable, and we, we also know, we also assume that the variance of sigma sigma i is equal to, uh, sorry, variance of epsilon i is equal to sigma square. So the variance of y i is also equal to sigma square. So variance of y i is equal to sigma square. Now, uh, expected value of y i square is equal to variance of y i plus expectation of y i whole square. This is the this is from the uh, uh, from the definition of the variance. Uh, well, now the variance of y i is equal to sigma square and expectation of y i is this quantity. So, this is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x i whole square, right. And uh, similarly, uh, we can find out the expectation expected value of y bar square. Uh, it can be uh, proved that expected value of y bar square is equal to of course, this is equal to variance of y bar plus expectation of y bar whole square. So, variance of y bar is equal to sigma square by n and uh, expectation of y bar is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x bar. So, this is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x bar whole square. Now, basically what I will do is that I will just plug uh, these values here. Uh, so, expected value of S y y is equal to this thing summation 
over i. So, n sigma square plus summation beta naught plus beta 1 x i whole square minus n times expectation of y bar square which is uh, this quantity. So, n times uh, this term. So, this is basically sigma square minus n times beta naught plus beta 1 x bar whole square. Well, so little bit uh, algebra uh, uh, will prove that this is, equal, is nothing but n minus 1 sigma square plus beta 1 square summation of x i square minus n x bar whole square. And uh, this is nothing but n minus 1 sigma square plus beta 1 square s x x. So, this is the notation for uh, this term summation x i minus x bar whole square. Okay. So, what we prove that expected value of s y y is equal to n minus 1 sigma square plus beta 1 square s x x. Now, uh, see that we, we want to compute the expected value of residual sum of square. So, this involves the expected value of s y y and the expected value of beta 1 hat square s x y. Next, we will compute the expected value of this one. So, this is equal to next expectation of beta 1 hat square s x y is equal to I think I did a mistake here. Uh, this is not x y, this is x x, this is x x. Okay. So, this is not x y, this is x x x x. Okay. So, this one is equal to s x x expected value of beta 1 hat square. Okay. And uh, we know that beta 1 uh, expected value of beta 1 hat is equal to beta 1 this is an unbiased estimator and the variance of beta 1 hat is equal to sigma square s x x. So, expected value of beta 1 hat square is equal to variance of beta 1 hat plus expected of expected value of beta 1 hat whole square. Okay. So, we know uh, both the values here, this is equal to sigma square by s x x and uh, this one is equal to uh, beta 1 square. Right? Uh, well, uh, so, this thing is equal to 
is x x and uh, expected value of beta 1 hat square is equal to sigma square is x x plus beta 1 square ok. So, this is going to be equal to sigma square plus beta 1 square is x x right. Now, uh, just uh, we need to plug these two values here. Uh, expected value of residual sum of square is equal to we proved that this one is equal to uh, n minus 1 sigma square plus beta 1 square is x x and this one is equal to minus sigma square minus beta 1 square is x x and this one is nothing but n minus 2 sigma square. So, what you prove is that uh, expected value of S is residual residual sum of square by n minus 2 is equal to sigma square. That means, uh, residual sum of square by n minus 2 is an unbiased estimator of sigma square. Okay. Uh, so, what we prove is that expected value of S is residual by n minus 2 is equal to sigma square and uh, this S is residual by n minus 2 this is also denoted by m s residual and this is called residual mean square this is called square ok. So, this is uh, uh, we ultimately uh, found uh, an unbiased estimator of a uh, sigma square. Uh, which is uh, m s uh, residual. Uh, next, uh, we will talk about uh, the uh, distribution of m s residual. Okay. So, what is s s residual? Residual sum of square is nothing but summation e i square. Okay, i is from 1 to n. So, this E i is nothing but the ith residual, this is uh, the difference between uh, the observed response value and the predicted res response value. Okay. So, it can be proved that uh, expected value of E i is equal to 0. So, uh, you can you can prove it and also it can be proved that the variance of E i is equal to sigma square. See this E i, this E i is nothing but the estimate of ith error term. Okay. So, the variance of E i this can be proved uh, sigma square and also you know uh, we have assumed that epsilon i follows normal 0 sigma square and uh, they are independent uh, which implies that uh, the observations y i is they are also normal with uh, mean beta naught plus beta 1 x i and variance sigma square. 
Now, see, uh, this E i is uh, it is a linear combination of y i's. Uh, this y i hat, this y i hat is nothing but beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat x i. Okay? And uh, both we, we proved that beta 1 hat is a linear combination of the observations and also beta naught hat is also a linear combination of the observation. So, the whole thing this E i is, uh, is a linear combination of uh, linear combination, combination of the uh, observations, uh, which implies that E i follows normal because it is a uh, E i is a linear combination of normal variables and the linear combination of normal variables is also normal. So, that is why E i follows normal with mean 0 and the variance is equal to sigma square. And from here we can say that E i by sigma this follows standard normal 0, 1 and uh, also since E i by sigma follows standard normal, we can say E i square by sigma square this follows chi square 1. Well, and uh, and SS residual is basically it's a sum of uh, e i square i equal to one to n, but the distribution of SS residual is not chi square n because because all the e i's are not independent. Uh, they this e i's satisfy some constraint uh, well we know that I mean beta naught hat and beta 1 hat are least least square estimator of beta naught and beta 1 respectively. And this E i which is equal to y i minus y i hat they satisfy the constraint that E 1 plus E 2 plus E n equal to 0. That is, this is what we proved before also. The sum of the residuals is equal to 0 and also it satisfies, this is basically the first uh, normal equation which the residuals satisfy and the second normal equation is summation E i x i equal to 0. That is E 1 x 1 plus E 2 x 2 plus E n x n is equal to 0. So, what I want to prove here is that this uh, S s residual by sigma square which is equal to summation E i square by sigma square, this does not follow chi square n, it follows chi square with degree of freedom n minus 2, because there are n minus 2 degree of freedoms for the residuals. There are n minus 2 degree of 
freedom for residuals all the all the eis are uh, not uh, independent you, you know the first uh, i mean you can choose uh, n minus 2 uh, residuals uh, independently and then the remaining two residuals uh, have to be chosen in such a way that uh, they satisfy uh, the condition that summation e i equal to 0 and uh, and summation e i x i equal to 0. So, you have the freedom of choosing n minus 2 residuals or n minus 2 e i s independently and the remaining uh, two residuals must be chosen in such a way that they satisfy these two conditions. That is why, uh, that is why the, the distribution of S s residual by sigma square follows chi square with degree of freedom n minus 2, it is not chi square n. If all the E i s are, if there is no constraint on or there is no constraint on E i, then this is, uh, this could follow chi square n, but since we have two constraint on the residuals, uh, it does not follow chi square n, it follows chi square n minus 2. So, uh, I repeat just uh, that uh, we have, we have the freedom of choosing uh, n minus 2 residuals independently and the remaining uh, two residuals have to be chosen in such a way that they satisfy these two conditions like uh, summation e i equal to 0 and the summation e i x i equal to 0. Well, so what he proved is that uh, summation s s residual. by sigma square follows chi square n minus 2, which is equivalent to say that n minus 2 m s residual by sigma square follows chi square n minus 2, because, because you know m s residual is nothing but S s residual by n minus 2. Okay, so, this is the result uh, we, we proved and uh, this is very much useful uh, in, in testing of uh, uh, hypothesis. Okay, so, next uh, we uh, move uh, to the evaluation of model. Well, so what we learned in, in the in the first lecture is that uh, given a set of uh, uh, data or given a set of observations, uh, we learned how to how to estimate uh, we, we have learned how to estimate the uh, regression coefficients. That means, we have learned how to fit uh, a regression model to the data. Okay. So, once the linear model has been fitted, the next job is to confirm the goodness of the fit. Okay. So, what we will do is that we, we are going to uh, test the significance of the regression coefficients beta naught and uh, and beta 1. Well, uh, first uh, we will test the hypothesis that uh, beta 1 equal to 0, this is the null hypothesis against the alternative hypothesis that beta 1 not equal to 0. 
Okay, what is the significance of this uh, null hypothesis beta 1 equal to 0? If beta 1 equal to 0, then the model become y equal to uh, beta naught plus epsilon. That means there is no linear relationship between the variables x and y. So, if h naught is uh, accepted, then we conclude that uh, there is no linear relationship between, between the regressor variable and the response variable. And we say that x is of little value in explaining the variation in y. Whatever be the value of x, we can, we can estimate the regressor variable y i by y bar. If h 1, if h naught is rejected, that means, if the alternative hypothesis, the two sided uh, alternative hypothesis beta 1 is accepted, that means, it says that there is a linear relationship between the regressor variable x and the response variable y and x is of value in in explaining the variation in y. This is the significance of the alternative hypothesis. Well, so how to, uh, to perform this uh, test? We have to compute the value of the test statistics and the here to test this hypothesis h naught which is equal to beta 1 equal to 0 against the alternative hypothesis h 1 beta 1 not equal to 0. The test statist statistics here is beta 1 hat, which is an estimator of beta 1. Okay. And before we have uh, proved that beta 1 hat, which is equal to summation uh, x i minus x bar into y i by summation x i minus x bar whole square. This is equal to, this can be written as summation c i y i. That means, uh, beta 1 hat is a linear combination of the observations y i. And we know that y i follows, we know that y i follows normal distribution with uh, some mean and variance sigma square and the mean is beta naught plus beta 1 x i. Okay. So, here beta 1 hat is a linear combination of normal variables, which implies that beta 1 hat is also normal with mean we know the mean of beta 1 hat beta 1 hat is an unbiased estimator the mean of beta 1 hat is beta 1 and the variance of beta 1 hat is we proved before that is sigma square by s x x okay so we need uh, the sampling this is called the sampling distribution of beta 1 hat to find the critical value for the testing of hypothesis. Well, 
now from here we can say that thus z equal to say beta 1 hat minus beta 1 by sigma square s x x we know that this follows normal 0 1 standard normal okay and the test statistic is equal to beta 1 hat by sigma square s x x this is to help this is the z z equal to this under under h naught because under h naught beta 1 is equal to 0 and this is the this is the test statistic to test the hypothesis that h naught beta 1 equal to 0 against the alternative hypothesis that beta 1 is not equal to 0. Now, if see usually this variance I mean sigma square is uh, not known the population variance is not known if if sigma square is known we can use z to test the hypothesis h naught beta 1 equal to 0 and we reject the critical region here we reject uh, h naught if z is greater than z alpha by 2. So, we reject uh, the null hypothesis at alpha level of significance if z is greater than z alpha by 2. So, this z alpha by 2 is uh, is nothing but the upper upper alpha by 2 percentage point of standard normal distribution. So, this is the point z alpha by 2 and this is the point minus z alpha by 2. This is the PDF of standard normal distribution. Okay. So, intuitively I mean uh, I mean we, we we reject uh, we reject the hypothesis null hypothesis if if beta one is uh, is is not close to zero well and uh, formally I mean formally we we, we we found the test statistic value uh, z and we check if the z is greater than z alpha by two then we reject the null hypothesis otherwise we accept the null hypothesis okay but uh, i mean uh, usually sigma square is uh, usually sigma square sigma square is not known this is a practical case i mean we can't assume that sigma square is known and we we know that the unbiased estimator of sigma square is ms residual because we proved that m expectation of ms residual which is equal to expectation of uh, ss residual by n minus 2 this is equal to sigma square so what we do is that the test statistic to test the hypothesis beta 1 equal to 0 this was of the form beta 1 hat by root over of sigma square by 
case x x. But sigma square is not known here I mean this is the more practical case that uh, sigma square is not known. So, what we do is that we just replace this sigma square by its unbiased estimator m s residual and we call it t and this is the this is the test statistic say beta 1 here. This is the test statistic to test the given hypothesis. Now, this does not follow normal. Okay. Uh, we need to find the distribution of uh, this one. Uh, what we know is that uh, uh, beta 1 hat follows normal with uh, mean beta 1 and variance sigma square by s x x right and uh, so from here we can say that beta 1 hat minus beta 1 by sigma square s x x root this follows standard normal normal 0 1 this is 1 and also we know that also we know that n minus 2 m s residual that means s s residual by sigma square this follows chi square n minus 2 and it can be proved that these two are independent. Now, there is a very uh, one very standard result in uh, in sampling distribution. Uh, let uh, x follows normal 0 1 and y follows chi square n and they are independent. Then x by root over of y by n this follows t distribution with the degree of freedom n. This is a very standard result. I am expecting that you know uh, sampling distribution well. And now uh, we are going to make use of this result here. So, this one follows standard normal and this one follows chi square n minus 2 and from here I can say that uh, beta 1 hat minus beta 1 by sigma square s x x by n minus 2 m s residual this is my x this is my y. So, y by n minus 2 root of this thing this follows t with n minus 2 degree of freedom. I am just making uh, use of uh, this result this is my x this is my y and y follows chi square n minus 2 instead of n and x follows standard normal. So, x by root of y by n minus 2 this follows t n minus 2 uh, and from here we get that beta 1 hat minus beta 1 by this will cancel out uh, by m s residual by sigma square sorry m s residual s x x 
least follows t n minus 2. So, you obtain this from from here only. So, when uh, we are talking about the testing uh, testing the hypothesis beta 1 equal to 0 against the alternative hypothesis beta 1 not equal to 0 and uh, we are considering the case that sigma square is not known. So, what basically I did here is that I replaced the sigma square by S S residual and we proved that this follows T n minus 2 and uh, this T is equal to beta 1 hat by M S residual by S x x under under h naught under h naught beta 1 is equal to 0. So, I am expecting that uh, you know testing of hypothesis well uh, and uh, now we know the distribution of the test statistic and this is a two sided test. So, we we reject uh, the null hypothesis. So, we reject uh, H naught beta 1 equal to 0 if, if this T value is greater than T alpha by 2 with degree of freedom n minus 2 where this T alpha by 2 n minus 2 is the upper alpha by 2 percentage point of T distribution with n minus 2 degree of freedom. Okay, so, this is the critical region and if the T value is greater than this one, the mod of T value is greater than this one and then we are going to reject the null hypothesis beta 1 equal to 0 and we conclude that there is a linear that uh, rejecting the null, null hypothesis means accepting the alternative hypothesis that beta 1 not equal to 0 and we conclude that there is a linear relationship between the regressor variable and the response variable. Now, uh, let us recall uh, the toy example and uh, these are the cost, uh, the money spent on advertising and the, this is the sales amount and uh, what we want to check, uh, okay, before we already, uh, we have a fitted relationship between x and uh, y and now we want to check uh, whether the relationship is significant at uh, point 0 0.05 level of significance that is uh, alpha equal to point 0 0.05 that is type 1 error. Okay. So, let me uh, uh, do this one here x is equal to uh, the cost and the money spent on advertisement that is uh, the regressor variable the values for these one uh, values for this is 1. 2, 3, 4, 5 and y is the sales amount and the values are 1, 1, 2, 2, 4 and using the least square technique, we already we have estimated the regression coefficients and the fitted model is y hat equal to minus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.7 x. So, beta 1 is 0 0.07 and uh, beta naught equal to minus 0 0.1. So, this is the fitted model. Well, now corresponds to x equal to 1 the predicted value of the response variable is point 
6 you just put x equal to 1 here that gives that y1 hat or the predicted value is 0 0.6 corresponds to x equal to 1. Similarly, for x equal to 2 the predicted value is 1.3 for x equal to 3 the predicted response value is equal to 2 for x equal to 4 y hat is equal to 2.7 for x equal to 5 y hat is equal to 3.4. So, this is y 1 hat, y 2 hat, y 3 hat, y 4 hat, y 5 hat. Now, let me compute E the residuals E i. I call them i. Okay. So, E i equal to y i minus y i hat that is the uh, observed response and the predicted response. So, the values are 0 0.4 minus 0 0.3 0 minus 0 0.7.6. So, from here we can compute SS residual which is equal to summation E i square. Uh, this can be proved that from here you can compute this, this is equal to 1.1 and here MS residual is equal to, you know MS residual is SS residual by n minus 2, here n is equal to 5, we have 5 observations. So, n minus 2 equal to 3, so this gives, this is equal to 1.1 by 3, which is equal to 0 0.3666. Okay. So, let me compute the test statistic value t, t equal to beta 1 hat by root over of m s residual by s x x. Okay. So, we know what is the value of m s residual beta 1 hat equal to 0.7 and the value of m s residual is 0.3666. What is s x x? s x x equal to summation x i square minus n x bar square. So, it is not difficult to compute from here, you are, you are given the excise values. So, this is equal to 55 minus n equal to 5 and x bar equal to 3 square, which is going to be 10 and uh, the t value, ultimate t value is going to be 3.3 five six. Okay. So, the t value is equal to the observed t value is 3.356 and uh, from the table you find the value of t alpha by 2 here alpha is equal to 0 0.05 by 2 and uh, degree of freedom is n minus 2 n is 5. So, this is equal to 3. So, this is going to be 3.18. So, since, since t is greater than this quantity, we conclude that h naught is h naught that is uh, that is beta naught beta 1 equal to 0 is rejected. Okay. That means, uh, we say that there is a uh, there is a uh, linear relationship between between the regressor variable and the response variable and here is the uh, summary uh, we are trying to test this hypothesis we have the given observation and the level of signif significance is 0 0.05 degree of freedom is 5 minus 2 equal to 3 
uh, we already computed the test statistic value which is equal to 3.656 and uh, the critical value is uh, uh, is uh, 3.1824 which is nothing but uh, t.025 with degree of freedom 2 and since uh, this 3.6 is in the critical region it lies in the critical the observed value is in the critical region we are going to reject the null hypothesis at alpha level of significance and conclude that there is evidence of a linear relationship between between the response variable and uh, the regressor variable and uh, yeah now we can uh, stop for today thank you